So, in the previous two lectures, we considered friction factors in fully developed laminar flow in regular section ducts as well as ducts of uh, complex uh, cross sections like any arbitrary cross section as long as they were singly connected. We now turn our attention to fully developed heat transfer and like we did in the case of uh, friction factor, we shall first of all look at very, very simple situations like the circular tube family, annulus and so on and so forth uh, under variety of boundary conditions. To do that, first of all, we must define fully developed heat transfer. Consider this duct in which uh, fluid at uniform temperature enters and there is a constant wall heat flux supplied at the wall. Then you can see that, uh, that the wall temperature will begin to rise and uh, after some distance would rise at a linear rate. The bulk temperature however, simply by from first law of thermodynamic that is m dot C p uh, into d t bulk by d x. Mind you heat flux is constant and therefore, m dot C p into d t bulk by d x into d t bulk will be simply equal to q wall into perimeter into d x and therefore, d t bulk by d x will be simply q wall into perimeter divided by m dot C p and all these are constants and therefore, therefore you would see that the, the bulk temperature would rise linearly with x right from the start. We of course, assume that the velocity profile is fully developed uh, may or may not be fully developed uh, and therefore, this shows the thermal development of, of the temperature profile. You can see it is started with a uniform temperature, but then as the heat flux comes in, it assumes a, a, a curved shape. Of course, the gradient at each section would be constant because Q wall is constant. Ultimately, the, the profile would become like that. And uh, since heat transfer coefficient is defined as uh, uh, Q wall over T wall minus T bulk, this is constant. The difference between T wall minus T bulk is small to begin with and therefore, heat transfer coefficient is high near x equal to 0 and it progressively drops as difference between T wall minus T bulk increases uh, and ultimately becomes uh, constant because T wall minus T bulk itself becomes constant. That is depicted on the left figure here. Now, let us consider another boundary condition which is frequently met that of a constant wall temperature. This is like steam heating in which uh, the wall temperature is constant. The fluid enters at a value uh, lower than the wall temperature which is shown here and the fluid bulk temperature would therefore, start rising. You can see here unlike the constant wall heat flux case, the bulk temperature does not rise linearly, but it in rises non-linearly with x. To begin with the gradient of temperature is very, very large and therefore, at the wall and therefore, h which is minus k d t by d y at r or plus here divided by T wall minus T bulk. So, although T wall minus T bulk is large, so is uh, K d T d y at R is very, very large and uh, as a result again you get a, a variation of heat transfer coefficient h which is very similar to that, which is very similar to that in a constant heat flux case. So, that is what I have shown here h goes on uh, changing with x, but decreasing with x. The temperature profile of course, becomes curved because of thermal boundary layer development, 
Mind you, at each section, the T wall will be same. Only thing is, the T center line will go on increasing, so that the T bulk goes on increasing. And this variation is nonlinear, as I have indicated here. Of course, if the duct was very, very long, say going up to infinity, the bulk temperature itself would become equal to the wall temperature. In fact, the temperature at all radii will become equal to the wall temperature, but that would occur only at infinity and it is not a case of, of importance in practical ducts, which have limited length to diameter ratio. Fortunately, however, it so happens that the as the temperature uh, profile develops, the gradient at the wall goes on changing. As a result, the heat transfer uh, rate goes on changing with x. A point is reached beyond which, uh, although T bulk is changing and heat transfer, the gradient of the temperature is changing at the wall, a, a point is reached where uh, K d T d r uh, divided by T wall minus T bulk becomes constant or h becomes constant. So, in heat transfer, we say fully developed heat, heat transfer is identified with constancy of h with actual distance. To show this, let us consider this. What does this imply for the temperature? So, we define for example, phi as a function of x and r in case of a circular tube as T wall x minus T x r divided by T wall x divided by T bulk x. Now, when you T wall and T bulk can only be functions of x, where T bulk is of course, rho C p u T d a and rho C p u d a, where d a is the uh, a is the area of cross section. In fully developed heat transfer, we say that d phi by d x will be 0 the dimensionless temperature profile will go to 0 or essentially dimensionless temperature profile will become constant with x. And Since phi is a constant with x, we would expect that d phi by dr at the, rate, at the wall will also be constant with x, which is of course means that it is equal to minus d t by dr r equal to r divided by t wall minus t bulk x equal to q wall over t wall x minus t bulk x. This definition is used for constant heat flux case. This definition uh, would be would indicate uh, definition of h in case of constant wall temperature. And uh, you will see that uh, that h becomes constant. So, fully developed heat transfer imply constancy of h implies that d phi by d x must be equal to 0. It is the dimensionless temperature which must be 0. Remember, in we defined fully developed flow where d u by d x itself was equal to 0. In, in uh, heat transfer, we say fully developed dimensionless temperature gradient with x is 0 is the, is the condition for fully developed heat transfer and it implies h equal to constant although T wall and T bulk uh, and indeed temperatures at every radius may vary with x and r, but as long as T wall, T bulk uh, and the heat flux, that ratio is remains constant or h is constant, we say the fully developed heat transfer has been reached. So, let us take the first case, the simplest case which you have studied in your un undergraduate course and that of a circular tube. Uh, with constant heat flux at the wall. So, uh, in that case, the governing equation, as you will recall, is simply 1 over r d by dr r d t by dr equal to u divided by alpha. Alpha is a thermal diffusivity k by rho C p into d t d x, but since q wall is constant, d t d x would be uh, replaced by d t bulk d x. Uh, and it will actually also mean d t wall by d x. From our definition, uh, you can see if d t bulk by 
if I were to say d phi by d x equal to 0 and d t x equal to d b d t bulk x, then d t wall by d x will also be 0. Uh, to make it explicit, let us say uh, d phi by d x equal to 0 would imply that uh, where phi is equal to t wall minus t divided by t wall minus t bulk and uh, uh, this would imply 1 over t wall minus t bulk uh, into d t wall minus t by d x minus 1 over uh, uh, t wall minus t uh, over t wall minus t bulk squared d t by d x t wall minus t bulk equal to 0, which essentially gives me d t w minus t by d x equal to t wall minus t over t wall minus t bulk into d t wall minus t bulk uh, by d x, which implies that all d t w by d x is equal to d t by d x and is also equal to d t bulk by d x. The implication is that that all once the fully developed flow is reached, uh, temperatures at all radii increase with constant uh, with x equal to and, and, and at all radii d t x is equal to simply d t by, by d x. So, you will see that d t bulk by d x of course, is simply this is m dot into C p and this is q wall into perimeter which of course, is a constant and therefore, the equation would simply become 1 over r d by d r r d t by d r and fully developed flow in, in a circular tube is given as 2 u bar 1 minus r square by r square and therefore, this would be that. So, if I integrate this equation twice with boundary conditions t equal to t wall at r equal to r and uh, d t by d r equal to 0 at the axis of symmetry, then uh, I, I can determine two constants of integration and uh, the result is uh, shown on the next slide here. t is equal to t wall minus 3 by 4 q wall over k r plus q wall over k r into r square minus r 4 r. Now, of course, I evaluate t bulk which is you will recall and we assume constant properties. So, rho C p just cancels and if I were to substitute this for temperature and the, the velocity profile from the previous slide, then I would get T w minus 11 by 24 q all over k r. Now, remember in all these cases integrations are very important and, and uh, you have to take a lot of care. Uh, to make sure that you make no errors in, in evaluating the temperature, uh, in evaluating the integrals. So, uh, you can now see that Nusset number which is defined as h d by k, it will be equal to 2 r by k q wall over t wall minus t bulk and t wall minus t bulk is 11 by 24 q wall r by a. So, that gives us 48 by 11 equal to very well known result 4.3636. Uh, which you derived in your undergraduate course. A similar analysis for flow between parallel plates, uh, which are separated by a distance 2 b. Say, if I have uh, two parallel plates uh, and the distance between the plates is 2 b and if I measure y from the axis symmetry, then u fully develop uh, divided by uh, u bar in this particular case is 3 by 2 1 minus y by y square by b square as you can as you recall and uh, if i carry out the similar analysis for constant heat flux at both the walls then the answer i would get is uh, based on hydraulic diameter remember the hydraulic diameter for plate uh, distance of 2b uh, d h is 2 times the plate distance and that is equal to 4 b. So, h 4 b by k will give you 8.235.
very simple cases that can be done by pencil and paper integration. No, no difficulty at all. You do not need numerical integration or anything like that. Let us now turn our attention to a little bit more complicated thing. Again, uh, I am going to consider now a flow in an annulus, uh, flow inside an annulus. You can get variety of it may be heated from inside or it may be heated from outside uh, Q wall O or Q wall I. So, we are going to consider this particular case, uh, uh, in fact both the cases in, uh, in turn. So, let us look at uh, you will recall from our uh, earlier analysis that uh, fully developed velocity profile is given as 2 by m 1 minus r by r o square uh, plus b ln r by r o, which has a logarithmic term in it uh, and b itself is this, m is this and r star is r i by r o, the radius ratio of the, the annulus. The equation proper of course, remains the same, uh, it, it does not change at all. Only thing is d t d x here will be d t bulk by d x and that would be equal to 2 pi r o q wall o plus r i q wall i divided by rho c p u bar pi r o squared minus r i squared. We can have two types of boundary conditions. One in the first case outside wall is heated. So, q wall o is given equal to k d t by d r at r o and the inner at the inner radius r i we have t w i. On the other hand we can also have a case in which the outer uh, uh, inner heat flux is given and the outer uh, wall temperature is T w o uh, annulus solution. So, if I integrate uh, this is this particular equation with uh, substituting for d t by d x d t bulk by d x and u f d equal to this and integrate this equation twice, which is mind you quite a elaborate uh, integration because logarithms are involved. I would get temperature itself as that, uh, where uh, A itself A the multiplier of this square bracket is this and Q star is inner wall heat transfer divided by outer wall heat flux. I will consider two cases as I said in the case 1 where outer wall is heated C 1 turns out to be this and C 2 turns out to be this. In the other case where inner wall is heated uh, it will turn out to be this and C 2 is equal to that. So, mind uh, these things require very careful algebra uh, in order to avoid any errors. I can express the solution that of the previous slide uh, in a more compact form as T minus T w o Q wall o r o by k, which has dimensions of temperature q wall r o by k has dimension equal to 1 over m into 1 plus q star r star plus uh, mind you q star is q wall i minus q wall o uh, 1 minus r star uh, r star is r i by r o whole squared uh, multiplied by a function f 1 uh, minus function f 2 and I have given here the values of f 1 and f 2. We now define let us say uh, in case 1 where q wall o is heated, I will define n u o equal to at the outer wall h o d h by k where the heat transfer is been specified and that would be equal to q wall r o by k t wall minus t bulk into 2 into 1 minus r star square. Remember this is nothing but uh, uh, for the annulus d h is equal to 2 times r o minus r i 2 times r o minus r i and that is what is reflected here. So, if I take r i common you will get that. So, with this temperature now you must evaluate the bulk temperature mind you the bulk temperature evaluation becomes extremely difficult because there are logarithmic terms involved and numerical integration is the best way out. It, it, it does not require too much effort. For case 2 where uh, inner wall is heated that is q wall i is given the solution can be expressed compactly in this fashion r star square by m into 1 over q star uh, plus r star 
or, or that multiplied by a function f 3 plus all this uh, and f 3 itself is given by a long expression like that. Uh, mind you, uh, these, these expressions take uh, quite a bit of algebra to, uh, to arrive at and again in this particular case I will define n u i equal to h i d h by k equal to q wall i r o by k in divided by t wall i minus t bulk into 2 into 1 minus r. Again using this temperature profile I must evaluate t bulk which is required here by numerical integration. It is very fortuitous that uh, the n u i n u o for a variety of radius ratios can actually be expressed in the form I have indicated. N u i would be equal to N u i i into 1 minus theta i by q star and N u o can be expressed as uh, uh, equal to N u o o into 1 minus theta naught minus q star, where N u o o and theta o, N u i i and theta i are simply functions of the radius ratio. Now, remember q star was actually equal to q w i divided by q w o uh, is equal to theta i. If, if suppose that was equal to theta i, then this gives a uh, odd result that n u i would be equal to infinity, but that, that should not uh, worry us because all, all it implies is that uh, it does not imply infinite heat transfer, but simply that the inner wall temperature turns out to be equal to the bulk temperature and therefore, uh, n u i goes to infinity. Similarly, if q star is less than theta i, say q star is less than theta i, then n u i will turn negative, which implies negative h i, but again as we said repeatedly that this is not uh, a particularly um, unacceptable situation. All it implies is that uh, since n u i is negative, uh, t wall must be greater than t bulk, t wall i must be greater than t bulk, uh, I, I beg your pardon, t wall i must be less than t bulk and as a result the, the n u i has turned out to be negative. So, uh, similar arguments would apply of course, to n u o. So, values of n u i i, n u o o, theta i and theta o are given on the next slide, but I you to write the previous solutions in this manner, you again have to do little bit of algebraic manipulation uh, to show that this theta i and n u i i are functions of radius and only q wall minus uh, q wall i over q wall o uh, separates out as a function. So, here are the solutions that I present uh, from r star equals 0, which is a, so the circular tube and you can see n u i i has no meaning, but n u o o is 4.364 and its influence coefficient is 0 and therefore, n u o itself as you can see here uh, influence coefficient is 0 uh, and n u o would be equal to n u o o and therefore, that would be equal to 4.364 as I go on increasing the inner radius, uh, then uh, you can see that uh, the coefficients and the n u o o values go on changing. When r, I, r star becomes 1, you essentially have flow between parallel plates. In this case, both n u i i and n u o o and theta i and theta o are exactly identical uh, and uh, therefore, uh, as they should be and, and, and our table confirms that they turn out to be the same. So, usually Nusselt numbers are not uh, readily available for annulus, but with this method you can see now you can evaluate them for any, any situation for any q wall i, any q wall o uh, that may be prescribed and you can readily recover the solutions for entire family. Uh, of annulus solutions. I will deliberately consider now a problem in which uh, uh, I am considering flow between parallel plates that is the last entry in that table. Let us say this is q 2 and this is q 1 
the velocity is fully developed. So, if you read the problem, it is like this the flow between parallel plates which are 5 centimeters apart. So, therefore, d h will be 10 centimeters and I have said q 1 is equal to 1 kilowatt per meter square and this is 5 kilowatts per meter square. Of course, since the flow is fully developed, the bulk temperature is rising with x and I am simply considering the k x actual position where T bulk is 30. T bulk is 30 degrees centigrade and the conductivity of the fluid is 0.2 watts per meter Kelvin. The, the question is what will be T w 1 and what will be T w 2? That is the question that I ask. So, for example, the solution would run something like this n u 1 will be h 1 d h by k equal to n u 1 1 over 1 minus theta 1 q star and if you see the influence coefficient for uh, uh, for parallel plates is 0 0.346, n u i i is 5 uh, 5 5.385 and therefore, the uh, n u 1 will become 5.385 1 minus 0 0.346 divided by q star which is 0 0.2 and therefore, the Nusselt number turns out to be negative 7.377 minus 7.37. And therefore, the heat transfer coefficient will also turn out to be uh, negative minus 14.753. And since q wall is 1 kilowatt, uh, h 1 is minus 14.753 uh, and t bulk is 30, I can evaluate t w 1 as minus 37.8. So, t w 1 evaluates to minus 37.8. Uh, 78 degrees centigrade. What about the outer wall? You can do the same thing n u 2 equal to h 2 d h by k equal to n u 2 2 minus 1 minus theta 2 into q star and uh, again you will see n u 2 will turn out to be 5.785 h 2 in this case will be 11.57 and t w 2 turns out to be 462.112. You can see what a great temperature difference there is. So, basically you have a situation where a very high temperature on this side and a very low temperature on this side. So, minus 38 here 462 here and the average temperature average temperature is 30 degrees centigrade. It is for this reason that we are interested usually in uh, finding out the solutions because the wall no wall should become too hot or too cold uh, because it might affect other processes on outside or inside of the analysis. Uh, so, in as much as the bulk temperature is only 30 degrees centigrade, the wall temperatures can be enormously different for just a, a very small heat fluxes of 1 kilowatt to 5 kilowatt meter square. So, it is for this reason that we uh, take particular care in evaluating our Nusselt numbers accurately in analysis flows. I turn my attention to circular tube, circular tube heat transfer in which T w is constant, actually constant and the flow is fully developed. So, you can say that in this particular case N u sub T means T wall is constant, it will be H 2 r divided by k and that would be equal to d t d r at r. Uh, into 2 r divided by t wall minus t bulk and that should be a constant because h itself uh, we say uh, the fact that it is fully developed means uh, h is constant and therefore, Nusselt number is a constant. Then if you go back to slide 2, 
and recall that this is the condition for fully developed heat transfer for h equal to constant. Then you will see that d t by, by d x would be simply phi times d t bulk by d x and d t bulk by d x would be from heat balance uh, 2 alpha divided by u bar r equal to q d t by d r. Remember k d t d r at r equal to r is simply the heat flux that is coming in and therefore, d t bulk by d x would be related to d t by d r at the wall at the wall. So, if this was the original equation and if I now substitute for d t d x in terms of phi, then this will transform the equation would transform to this form d 1 over r d by d r r star d phi by d r star equal to minus 2 n u t phi into 1 minus r star square. This is nothing but a second order ordinary differential equation uh, with a boundary condition that phi r star at 1 uh, which is the wall uh, it is equal to 0 phi is 0 and uh, d phi by d r star at the axis of symmetry is 0 because it is a symmetry line and, and r star is equal to r divided by r. So, this kind of a second order ordinary differential equation is really solved by shooting method, shooting method as I show you here. So, what one does is that let us say this is r star and we want d phi by d r star equal to 0. The actual value of phi would not matter. All that we want is d phi by d r star uh, equal to 0. It is a dimensionless quantity and we say d phi by d r star is equal to 0. So, we assume a value of Nusselt number and solve the ordinary differential equation on a computer perhaps and you will come up with a value of phi at r star equal to 1 which is the wall which is the wall where we want phi star to be 0. If our a new guess was incorrect then the chances are that you will come up with this. So, this is a new guess 1. Obviously, it is not equal to 0 as I want it. So, I take another guess and you will see you, I may come up with that n u g 2 and the error now is on the positive side, the error here was on the negative side and therefore, I can use a bisection method to refine my error and, and generate a solution. Ultimately, I will come up with a value of n which gives me phi at r star equal to 1 equal to 0 which is what I want. So, this is the n u correct. This would be the correct value of n u and if you do that in this equation you have to go on assuming a value of n u t and solve the equation and uh, you will see n u t turns out to be 3.656 or sometimes taken as simply 3.66. It is also possible to solve this equation analytically uh, in a series form and the, the solution has been given here and again the value of, uh, of n u t works out to be 3.656. If I were to do this same problem for flow between parallel plates uh, with t wall equal to constant and t wall equal to constant on both sides. then the Nusselt number that I would develop is uh, 7.545, but that I leave you as an exercise to be done. We now turn our attention to one more case and that is the case of highly viscous fluids uh, uh, flowing in a tube, highly viscous. So, its Prandtl number is much much greater than 1, Prandtl number is much much greater than 1. In which case under and the, there is a constant wall heat flux applied. In that case you will recall from our energy equation that because viscosity is very very high, viscous dissipation term mu du by dr 
whole square becomes as important as the conduction term and therefore, it must be retained in the energy equation. U f d of course, is 2 u bar 1 minus r square by r square and d t bulk by d t by d x equal to d t bulk by d x is equal to constant. d u f d by d r square from this thing will evaluate to 16 u bar square r square by r power and therefore, substituting these things in here, I get 2 u bar by alpha 1 minus r square by r square d t bulk by d x equal to 1 over r d by d r r d t by d r plus 16 times mu by k u bar square r square divided by r 4. This is equation a 2 and the original equation is a 1 uh, and the boundary conditions are again at the axis of symmetry this would be 0 and at the wall uh, it is equal to q wall equal to k d t d r. The main thing is I said d t bulk by d x will be constant, but what will be its value that is what we need to evaluate. So, to do that on the next slide what I will do is I will simply integrate this equation. So, you can see the left hand side if I integrate over area of u f d and because d u f d by d x is equal to 0 as because it is fully developed u f d d t by d x will actually become uh, d x will actually become d by d x of u f d into temperature and I, I integrate this d by d x of 0 to r u f d t d y. Then you can see this gives me uh, d t bulk by this will give me d t bulk by d x because this when when this is divided by in integral 0 to r uh, u f d d y uh, uh, I mean d r r d r rather. Uh, this is the definition of t bulk and this is a constant u bar uh, r d r is nothing but a mass flow rate to the through the channel or through the circular tube. So, you will see that uh, to determine d t bulk by d x I would simply integrate this equation from a 0 to r on both sides of this equation. The left hand side will give me d t bulk by d x. This I will evaluate because I will get r d t dy d r at the wall and r d t by d r at the axis which is 0 and I will substitute q wall which is known for the upper boundary condition and likewise you integrate this from 0 to r. The result is d t bulk by d x would turn out to be 2 q wall alpha k u bar by r which is the case when there is no viscous heating is included, but now you see that the bulk temperature rise is also influenced by the amount of viscous heating that has taken place uh, and that is that is the equation A 3. So, if I substitute d t bulk by d x in equation A 2 which is this equation. So, if I substitute for d t bulk by d x I will have an equation which looks like this. I must integrate this equation twice and determine two constants of integration to determine the temperature profile. The temperature profile looks something like this. Remember again if mu was 0 that is if viscous dissipation was neglected then then that term would be 0 and here that term will and we will recover our original case of a solution without viscous heating. Uh, and the T bulk then evaluates this temperature must be integrated with U F D and uh, T wall minus T bulk would evaluate to 11 by 48 Q wall D by K plus mu U bar square by K. And therefore, now it is very easy to define the if I divide both sides by Q wall D by K then the Nusselt number would be obtained as here 11 by 48 plus mu u bar square divided by q wall d raised to minus 1 and this quantity is called the Brinkman number after the uh, scientists who first uh, uh, solved this kind of a problem and uh, this can be written as 192 divided by 44 by 192 multiplied by Brinkman number. Of course, if Brink num Brinkman number is 0 then you would readily recover 192 by 44 
equal to 4.364. So, the effect of Brinkman number for high Prandtl number fully developed heat transfer becomes very well. Higher the uh, Brinkman number depressed would be the heat transfer coefficient. I now consider the case of liquid metals when Prandtl number is very 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 small as you will recall for liquid metal the Prandtl number is uh, less than 0 0.01 usually. Prandtl number is less than 0 0.01 and therefore, the actual conduction term which we have been neglecting so far becomes important, particularly when uh, the wall temperature is constant. Wall temperature is constant and you have liquid, liquid metal heat transfer. Then the governing equation would look as I have shown here, there will be the radial conduction term and the actual conduction term equal to U f d by alpha d t by d x. Now, of course, this is now a two dimensional equation. It involves dependent variables r and x. It can be solved analytically uh, or nowadays much more simply by finite difference method. And I give below the finite difference method solutions uh, for different values of Peclet number. Now, I want you to appreciate how Peclet number comes about. So, the governing equation is 1 over r d by d r r d t by d r plus d 2 t by d x square equal to u f d divided by alpha d t by d x. Now, if I define x star is equal to x by r and r star is equal to r by r then you will notice that this will become simply 1 over r star d by d r star into r star d t by d r star plus d 2 t by d x square r star square uh, and uh, uh, equal to u f d by alpha d t by d x star into r. And uh, you will see that this this becomes uh, sorry and there would be 1 over r star here also. So, if I multiply through by r star uh, r square then you will see this becomes d by d r star into r star over d t by d r star plus d 2 t by d x star whole square is equal to u f d r divided by alpha d t by d x star. And what is that? Uh, u f d into r divided by nu into nu divided by alpha. If I do that, then you will see that uh, this is Reynolds number divided by 2 and this is Prandtl number nu divided by r the product of Reynolds and Prandtl is called the Peclet number. So, this is essentially Peclet number divided by 2 d t by d x uh, star and therefore, the equation can be written as uh, Peclet number into 1 over r star d by d r star uh, r star d t by d r star and so on and so forth. So, the, the Peclet number essentially determines the behavior of the solution. I have obtained this uh, remember uh, is because Prandtl number is so low the product of Reynolds and Prandtl can be very low in laminar flow. So, I have taken values of 0 0.1, 0 0.51, 1 0.52, 3, 5, 7, 0 0.5, 5, 10 and obtained solutions by finite difference method and here are the solutions for very low Peclet number the Nusset number is 4.057 but as I increase the Peclet number, which means allowing for more and more actual conduction, then uh, uh, you will see that this becomes uh, even more uh, the Nusset number goes on reducing. Uh, and when Peclet number is about 10 uh, and the wall temperature is constant, mind you, so in uh, large Peclet numbers, the actual conduction effect goes on 
almost becoming negligible and you arrive at 3.85. In effect, uh, as Peclet number tends to 0, you get only uh, constant heat flux solution. So, n u equal to 0.364 and as Peclet number tends to infinity, you get the constant wall temperature solution 3.667. There is yet another case of uh, considerable interest uh, which you might la like to know. And this is the case of uh, uh, a tube which may be receiving let us say radiant heating. Then clearly around the circumference it will have a variable heat flux. Q wall theta. Although actually, actually it will be constant. At each cross section, Q bar will be simply 0 to 2 pi, uh, 1 over 2 pi uh, Q wall uh, d theta uh, would be a constant with x. So, uh, this is a case. Uh, which will occur for radiant heating. Sometimes it will also occur for a tube of uneven uh, thickness, let us say, and it is being electrically heated, electrically heated. So, there is internal heat generation within the uh, tube and therefore, uh, it will receive circumferentially varying heat transfer. So, in that case, the, the equation would become again because of the uh, constant heat flux condition uh, d t bulk by d x would be constant given by that. And, but now, you must allow for conduction both radially as well as in the circumferential direction. Again, this 2 d equation can be solved both analytically or by finite difference method. And for q wall theta uh, as this a simple uh, circumferential variation of heat flux, the solution turns out to be uh, this uh, 1 plus b cos theta 11 by 48.5 b cos theta, where b is simply a parameter. So, uh, you can see in this case n u theta along the periphery of the duct can assume both positive as well as negative values. Uh, uh, but that should not disturb you because that is expected. All it tells you is whether the T wall bulk uh, is greater than T bulk or less than T bulk. Uh, but if B is equal to 0, which implies Q wall theta is uniform along the day, then you readily recover 4.364. And that is what we had. Uh, so, this particular type of problems are very, very important because hot spots have to be avoided on walls when you have uh, uneven heating on all the side. In the next lecture, we shall consider uh, heat transfer in non-circular and arbitrary section ducts.